I want to share with you about living the dream and talk a little story with you. In the summer of 2012, I had the privilege of working with a team of attorneys and judges from Washington, D.C. and the central Shenandoah Valley to implement and translate documentation for the Obama administration under what is called the DREAM Act. This act protects certain immigrants who came to the United States as children. President Obama announced that undocumented immigrants who were brought to the US before they turned 16 and are younger than 30 have been in the country for at least five continuous years, have no criminal history, graduated from a US high school or earned their GED or honorably discharged from the military will be immune from deportation. Can I get a hallelujah? Can I get an amen? I'm going to repeat this. Brought to the US before they turned 16. And they can apply for a work permit that will be good for two years with no limits on renewal. This is a clear path to obtain a green card. And I am happy to say that I worked with over 13 plus Hispanic immigrants to support them in making their dreams come true. To live and work in a country as wonderful as the good old US of A. These were all high school graduates. However, under the current policy, these individuals, although working and paying taxes, are ineligible for health insurance benefits, such as Medicaid or CHIP. Now, I'm going to repeat that. Working here, paying taxes here, and ineligible for social health care. Over 1.7 million workers, most of them teenagers. Do they matter? I'm going to repeat that. Do they matter? Brought to the US before they turned 16. Over, of, of the 1.7 million undocumented teenagers and young adults, the number has grown to close to 6 million dreamers since 2012. I wonder how many of these are women. We have women and children. I would consider my 16 year old teenager a child. We have them working away in agriculture, sometimes at $4.25 an hour. And we do not offer them the rights to health care with our glorious social system. The 1996 amendments to the FLSA, the Fair Labor Standards Act, from the U.S. Department of Labor Wage and Hour Division allows employers to pay a youth minimum wage 
of less than $4.25 an hour to employees who are under 20 years of age. During the first 90 consecutive calendar days after initial employment in certain agricultural fields. We can have children working at $4.25 an hour with no overtime laws to protect them because agriculture is exempt from overtime. Agriculture also ranks among the most hazardous industries. Farmers are at a high risk for fatal and non-fatal injuries, work-related lung diseases, noise-induced hearing loss, skin diseases, and certain cancers associated with chemical use and prolonged sun exposure. This is all stated by the Center for Disease Control, the CDC. Again, these teenagers can work for up to 90 days at $4.25 an hour, and we do not give them any health care rights. Now, the law contains certain protections for employees that prohibit employers from displacing any employee to hire someone at the youth minimum wage after the 90-day mark. But agricultural positions can also hold firm at $7.25 an hour, despite the increase in minimum wage for other sectors of vocation. This comes from the U.S. Department of Labor, Wage, and Hour Division. Women and children, teenagers, are granted documentation, but not rights to health care. women and children. Now you may ask, why should we as a nation have to take care of these people? Is it not enough that we allow them to live here? We do not deport them and send them back to their countries in most cases. I cannot help but to imagine that we have come a long way in caring for immigrants, but have we? In the 1850s, my great-great-grandparents settled in St. Louis from Ireland. Not more than 20 years later, a set of my great-grandparents also settled in St. Louis from Germany. I would assume that healthcare was little to non available. But the women in my family got pregnant, labored, and raised their children in the hope of the American dream. I am born from dreamers, a birthright citizen. My family dreamed that their offspring and legacy would be safe and protected on this U.S. soil. By the time my family migrated to the central Shenandoah Valley of Virginia, we were no more than apple orchard farmhands and laborers, working the land and soil as immigrant seasonal farm workers. I am asking Americans, especially Virginians, can we do better today? I wonder what would happen if we revisited the DREAM Act implemented by the Obama administration. And we worked to change policies that granted these working individuals access to social health care. Maybe this would give young women access to oral contraceptives, birth control, 
provide yearly screenings for human papillomavirus. Each year, more than 14 million people in the United States, most of them in their teens or early 20s. Let me repeat that. Most of them in their teens and early 20s are infected with HPV. Cervical cancer is the second most common cancer among women around the world. I am asking you, American, can we do better? Do they matter?